Another hot yeah, weekend pickums, bro. Another hot weekend pickums. It's too bad it's not legal here. It'd be great. <laughs> I know. I know. It'd be great if we could. It'd be great if we could take our own advice. I, I'm telling you, I mean, if if they went with you yesterday, which I'm watching the Jets play and I'm laughing to myself, dude. I'm so I'm so glad you picked the Falcons for what. Let's 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 just throw this out there real quick. I don't know how I allowed myself to get love drunk on Aaron Rodgers again real quick. I'm just not <laughs> sure what happened there. I would like to go back and smack myself in the face. This doesn't happen often. That's, I'm glad you were there to write the ship. But so if the if the listeners went with you, they went six and two. If they went with me, they went five and three. The higher number wins when it comes to our boys in the woods category. That takes us to 50 and 29, bro. We are 50 and 29 as a collective group in pickums. Denver lost. I'm blaming that on Russell Wilson. I think they had every opportunity to win that game. Was it Everyone three was... turnovers? Did he have three interceptions? Yeah, three three yeah. interceptions. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it every time. Including a red zone interception to end the game. Yeah. When yeah, they was, were there to brutal. win the game. Brutal. But I don't want to take anything away from the Texans. I love what they're doing. Great job, Texans. I think the Denver eventually had to fall off. If you heard it, I wasn't happy with the pick, but I had to roll with Denver because that's just, you know, the train wreck that I do. Yeah. You picked the 49ers correctly. Thank God. That we'll touch a little bit on that. I want to say the physical, emotional Buffalo Bills game the week prior played a little extra into this week and the hype around Dallas, yada, yada. That's fine. That's it is. I, I can't wait for that. Green Bay won. That was exciting. We'll talk a little bit about that also. So I went one and one in the pickums. Jacksonville is hot. I have no idea where I went with Jacksonville. I think I've said this a few times so far, Pat, on this, this season. I'm not sure why I'm treating Jacksonville the way I am, but a win tonight, and they are potentially the number one seed in the AFC currently. I think it's because we've seen the best of them. And then we've also seen them like suck bad. That game that yeah. they played out in, was it Germany they played in there? They looked fucking flat. I, I think it was a little after that. Cause for some reason, Germany, to, yeah, Europe to Jacksonville is a home game. They are dominant in Europe. It's something we'll bring up later on in one of the shows when we revisit. The Europe, Germans but... love Jacksonville, huh? They like the kitty cats. Yeah, it's like England loves Green Bay. Fucking, I'm yeah. telling you, it's it's like a home game to them, no matter where they go over there in Jacksonville. But uh, other than that, we've obviously had a massive week weekend in sports. Lots of controversy. I think both of us are on the same page with the FSU take. Let, let's just jump right into the college thing, and we'll wrap. We'll end it with the NFL. So yeah, so. yeah. It, it's bittersweet if you're an SEC fan that you got what you wanted. You got yeah. a new champion, no matter what. There's going to be a new champion crowned this yeah. year, whether that be Alabama, Michigan, Texas, or Washington. The numbers are out. Michigan right now is one and a half. Point one and a half. One and a half. So. I figured as much it would be a pick em game between yeah. alabama and michigan they did that at, they put that line out there on purpose that's to, it's to basically get people to bet so yeah absolutely absolutely and let's see texas i think texas is a what was it six and a half i think six and a half or four and a half four and a half texas is four yeah. and a half over washington but the uh, that is, if you, I was talking, did you believe, I don't believe that is a very good matchup for Washington at all. No, that is Texas is a better Oregon with a better I defense. Think, I think both of their defenses are suspect. I really do. I think Texas's offense is better than Oregon's Texas can, but Texas did beat Alabama. So they're capable of beating by two scores really, in Tuscaloosa by two exactly. scores in Tuscaloosa on the road. Yeah. On the road. I, Alabama's got a lot of this SEC backing, and and we'll touch on this real quick too, because there, there's a um, a narrative being pushed by the SEC right now 
when the camera room was on Michigan and it was like, we're about to see who number four is. Now, in yeah. this, we're about to see who Michigan's playing, but we're about to see who number four is. It doesn't matter who Michigan is playing. Y'all don't realize in that room, it didn't matter who was in that number four spot. Michigan was ready. Michigan is ready. It doesn't matter. It, okay, let's just say what it is. They were shocked. They, they weren't shocked. They were upset. They were like, whoa, really? Florida State it got was, left out? It was a human reaction. It was the same fucking reaction we all had except Alabama and Alabama fans. Nobody Literally was the ex- entire nobody was country. expecting to see them. Yeah, the entire country was not expecting to see Alabama sneak in at four. Come nobody on, be realistic. Gonna, no, Alabama from eight to four georgia from one to six yeah that's what everyone was shocked about but the moment they realized oh hell yeah it's alabama yeah because michigan's got some smoke with alabama we're ready to get ours alabama put a beat down on denard robinson i I remember that game at at good old texas ain't T Stadium, Denard yeah. Shalace Robinson. Michigan came in as number two in the country, and we all laughed. The only reason they were number two in the country is because the strength of schedule they had put in front of themselves. And it ended up being a pretty crazy year. I think we went nine and four or some shit like that. Yeah, it was a it was a up now, and down I mean, season. There's a lot to be said for FSU. There's a lot to be said for FSU. But I heard it the absolute best this morning. It's the because of argument, okay? Alabama didn't get in because they lost by two scores at home to Texas. Georgia didn't get in because they lost to Alabama in the SEC championship. FSU didn't get in because... Right? You you can't go to them and say because the quarterback, right? Because fucking Ohio State won it all with Cardell Jones. Yeah, okay. I, and, I saw and, that and, same comment too. And again, third stringer, oh, not even yeah. a backup, a third stringer. A third stringer, right? This is about the product on the field. Do you realize that Florida State's strength of record, which is what everyone is talking about, right? The people you played, the people they played, where they ended up, how you beat them, how your defense went. Do you know who the top three are with that, Pat? I'm about to tell you. Number Washington, one, number one. Washington, yep. Yep. Number two, Michigan. Yep. Number three, FSU. And floor was probably, uh, what, Alabama you, or Georgia? No. Four. Ohio yeah. State? Oh, no, Ohio four State was Ohio State. State. Yeah. Five was Alabama. Okay, so they didn't take that into consideration. No, oh, they didn't take that into consideration. See, this is the because of clause. So now if you're talking the four best teams... Georgia, according to Vegas, is a favorite in all of the matchups. All of them. Michigan, they're a favorite. Washington, they're a favorite. Alabama, they're a favorite. Texas, they're a favorite. So it's not the four best teams. You can't tell me that it's the four best teams. Well, Vegas they... doesn't think it's the four best teams then either. That's what you're saying. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, but the world, I I the world, revo- the sports world revolves around Vegas. We, you, we can't push that. Oh, otherwise. we we proved that. Hey, did you see that the SEC just signed a three billion dollar deal? Yeah, today. No, I didn't see that. Oh my God, Disney, Disney is now part. Oh yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a drowning fucking fish. <laughs> fucking Disney. But anyways, anyways. It's so what do you tell that's my only issue with all of this. Arguably, arguably, I'm excited to see Alabama. I'm excited to see Jim Harbaugh and Nick Saban fucking tackle each other. I'm ready for this matchup. I think we as a fan base should be ready for this matchup. It's going to be a really good game in the first half. I think the third quarter is going to really um signal what type of game that will be at the end i don't give a frank what people think or say alabama was a fucking shitstorm until the last four seconds of the iron bowl and now everyone's talking about alabama like they're some fucking god y'all don't 
Alabama going into that weekend was eight. If you thought that little of FSU, why were they four? That's the confusing portion of all of this. But regardless, if, if yeah. people just think Alabama's coming in because, oh, the SEC is going to walk all over this shit. Even had the SEC commissioner come in and say something about Sesame Street. Just laughing. Like, you guys are fucking drunk on just idiocracy. It was bad. It was a bad look for college football. It was a bad look for uh, <laughs> a lot of people. It gave the fa- well, the entire fan bases for a lot of teams black eyes because people were arguing this fact and that fact. Then there was people that were on the outside looking in that were trying to justify why their team didn't get in. It just It just didn't look good. Regardless, they probably made the be- the right the best decision, the right decision. But in the eyes of the fans, for they didn't make the right decision. For, yeah, for entertainment, entertainment value. value, absolutely. And that's at the end of but the day, if, they don't that's care. What they this say, is then yeah, these whole care. fuckers in that room need to come out and tell us. Was it even entertainment value, or does it just come down to money? Because you can't tell me that Michigan, Alabama, is going to draw a shit. Oh yeah, load. it's going to draw. It's going to draw a crowd. It's going to draw. Ta- and, in that, Texas, that, Washington that, is intriguing that, as well. Yeah, I think that boils into entertainment entertainment is only successful in dollar amounts entertainment is only successful in dollar amounts you have three of the largest fan bases in college football in the playoff this year you realize that someone else noticed that it's the big 10 versus the sec that is what this fucking playoff is it's the big 10 versus the sec i don't care what title they play under this night sky because tomorrow morning it's the Charles. Big Ten versus the SEC. Look at the rest of the bowl games as well. Yeah. Explain one thing to me. Did you happen to look at the bowl games? Why the fuck is Wisconsin, a 7-5 and five football team, playing LSU, who's 13th in the country? <laughs> they weren't even ranked the entire season, and they're playing LSU. You want to know why? You just said it. It's the Big Ten Versus the SEC. Look at all. You want to go the bowl. There's a ton of other SEC teams playing on Big Ten teams. Yeah. So I think there's five in total. Dude, Ohio State's got their hands full with Missouri. That's yeah. going to oh, be an yeah. interesting matchup. That'll be a fun hey, matchup. Hey, Missouri wanted all this smoke given Michigan shit. Guess what? You've got the second best team in the Big Ten. Good luck with that, by the way. Mm-hmm. Ohio State doesn't suck. So. No. They're actually really good. And, okay, so talking about Ohio State, so 48 hours ago, Ryan Day would not commit to Kyle McCord playing oh, excuse me, as the starter for Ohio State. 24 hours pass, Kyle McCord enters the transfer portal. He's not the only one. Fleming entered the transfer portal. Yeah. So three of their starters, offensive starters, are gone. Gone. Next season. Yeah. And commits leaving. That's and that's due to the fan base, dude. Oh, Mostly yeah. they're, the they're fan bitter. base they're very has caused Ohio State to lose commit commits. If that's insane, Mister well, Ohio, Mister Twenty Twenty Three, Mister Ohio just committed to Big Blue. Losing to Michigan is is the worst thing that can happen to Ohio State sports. It doesn't matter if they went to the playoff. If they lose to Michigan, those a lot of those players come there because. They're beating Michigan on a consistent basis. And if they're not yeah. beating them, they don't want to come there. No. And I think Michigan's kind of the same way. They were know? for a while. It took a bunch of blue blood players to come back. It was Michigan yeah. born players. I made a bunch of comments on it. I said, listen, it, it happened to us during the Urban Meyer years. You have somebody who was born a few moons ago watching that game going, all they need is me. And that dude's going to show up one day. We love it when Ohio State and Michigan are, are battling it out. We don't. I don't like to see blowouts, no matter what. I like to see close, competitive games, especially in the game. Yeah. And a lot of I've been talking to a lot of Ohio State fans, and I've had a lot of positive conversations with these people. We can be completely civil. We can also have our disagreements and be assholes to each other too. But the biggest asshole fan base that I've found on any social media page has been. The people who shouldn't be speaking, the Michigan State Spartan fans, are the absolute yeah. fucking worst yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. I swear. Yeah, and, and it, it makes sucks. No I've got sense some family with really close connections with Michigan State it, but it, too. I know. And it's the truth. Charles, it's the truth. A few. We, 
what yeah. we do. You know what we yeah. do on this podcast. If you if you're gonna write on the wall, we're gonna talk about it. Yeah, and they are horrible. They are they are really bad. It's like the mosquito just fast enough to miss the fucking cool little zapper uh, tennis racket that we used to get yeah. up in the UP. Zip, well, I wanted zip. to do. I wanted to bring a couple things up to you. I have a couple things on my phone here that I wanted to bring up to you. I'll see if I can email them to myself and I will put them up on the screen. And I want, I know what you're going to say on it, but I want your opinion. of. Okay. While you're doing that, I want to do a little side note, a little trivia, a little trivia action. Yeah, go for Um, it. CJ Stroud has an opportunity to lead the league in NFL pass or to lead an and passing yards, right? right? Yeah. Rookie quarterback and passing yards. The last time this was done was A, 1945, B, Damn. 1939, really? or C, 1980. Lead and passing yards. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I'm going to say 80. Okay. 1939. Davy O'Brien, never, Philadelphia never, Eagles. Don't, don't think I ever heard of him. I'm thinking <laughs> the, 80. You know, I was but thinking, listen, listen to the name Davy O'Brien. He's a fucking yeah. award, bro. I know, I know. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked. I had to look him up. I swear to God, 1939, Davy O'Brien, Philadelphia. He, he was the That's last crazy. rookie quarterback to lead the NFL in passing yards. So C.J. Stroud is special, bro. Okay, but here's a kicker. Kyler Murray was special also. Oh, and Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals, I love it. We were saying it on the show. There's more people on board this train now. We don't give a fuck. The more people on the train, the more tax money we make. Woo woo. But the point is, Arizona is not moving off of Kyler Murray. Get it through your thick fucking heads. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. And I tell you what, I feel so bad for the Bears, but it's looking like a solid chance that Marvin Harrison, who is a front runner for the Heisman, well done. Oh yeah, Mar- Junior is more or less projected to go to the Cardinals around two or three. Uh, although it's looking like the Patriots are going to be a solid two with that realm of Caleb Williams if the Bears f- don't fuck up, or Drake May if the Bears decide to move on from Justin Fields. All right, Charles, I, I got it up here. Awesome. Gonna. Yeah, that Davey go O'Brien thing fucking blew my mind. It's wild. Another quick stat while you're pulling that up. George Love threw his fourth three touchdown, zero interception game last night against the Kansas City Chiefs. That's beautiful. Yeah, he's t- tied for the league lead with, damn, um, I think Mahomey, actually. I think Patrick Mahomey. I think it was Patrick Mahomey. A beer promo said, poor until Iowa scores. The Hawkeyes lost 26-0. Man, I tell you what. The- Why would you do this? Oh, well, as, an, as an Iowa fan, you had to have loved this, actually. This, Bro, this I mean, a, the this, last time we played them in this scenario, they scored a field goal at the end of the game. I think. Hey, or, did you know where? Do you know where that was? No. X golf. It was X golf. Is it five hundred five hundred dollars worth of beer at X golf? Dog's going crazy. Five hundred dollars. That's it, man. Yeah. I, you should have done way better than that. I'm assuming X Golf with the with Iowa plan it might not have been the busiest place to have it. That's probably no, why they did it, honestly. That's probably why they did it. Hell yeah. Promotional. But yeah. oh my God. I wonder what they made in food. That's true. It could have lots of nachos and lots of what's Iowa known for? Other beans? corn. Beans. Corn? Beans? They, corn? Soybeans? They soy boys? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Buttered corn. I don't fucking know. I need to learn more about other states and other cultures most and stuff. So I don't look since, such a, like a big asshole. Most wins since 2022, week 14. Trevor Lawrence, 13. Patrick Mahomes, 13. Jalen Hurts, 13. Brock Purdy, 13. Entering week 13. I have another one for you. Yes, uh, sir. 
did you happen to look at all the rookies from this last year's draft? Why, rookie wide receivers. I have all their stats. Oh, no, it, whatever you're about to shoot out. I love oh, would it. you like to see him? All right, let's shoot let's it check him out. Obviously, we out. know who number one is. And that's going to be Puka. But yeah. the rest of them that are on this list are very I, I think, interesting. I, I bet I, I, I'm going to throw bet this you out know there. A couple of them. Two, two of them play for the Texans. They got to be in the top five. And Nico Tank Dell for sure. Nico Collins, maybe. I don't, Nico Collins was drafted the year prior, I think. Oh, shit, shit, shit. I feel so bad for Tank Dell, man. I can't wait for him to come back. Poor dude. For those of you who may not know, although I'm not sure if that's a possibility if you listen to this podcast, but he did break his shit. Jaden Reed is on this list, player. Yeah, but look at who number one was. Quentin Johnson. Quentin Quentin Johnston. Johnston. He was that really big bodied receiver. Yeah. And he was he went in the first round. And yeah. he has been an absolute bust, bust for the Chargers. And you got it, you, it's not because they don't have a good quarterback. It's no. fucking weird. That offense is so ugly, dude. That offense is so ugly. And you know what? Let's move on. Let's that, let's, that was our college football. Let's move on to the NFL. But look There's at, a lot to talk about. We got a lot. There's we got 28, what 27 days of um, Harbaugh versus Saban. I can't wait for media days. I can't wait to see what our boys put out there on that field. I. Love the shitty thing is Charles is every other receiver outside of Johnston is ha- is having a halfway decent season. It's having a really good season. Even yeah. even Jaden Reed, like that's receiving yards on there. What he's doing, he's got a, over. Yeah, he's a, got a couple hundred yards probably yeah, rushing I mean, too. What he's doing as a Swiss kickoff Army return. I think this, he's yeah. had a, qu- he's a couple of kickoff returns too and punt returns for decent yardage as well. He's a what do we call him? Our Swiss Army knife? Is that yeah. what you want to call him? Yeah, I mean, that, we'll call, that we'll, works call him little, we'll call him little J Swiss. We'll call him J Swiss we'll for now. J Swiss. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. We got there J Swiss. We, go. we got J Swiss coming in. I'm loving what he's doing. Which brings all right. Here we go. Let's let's, let's talk about this controversial Green Bay Kansas City game because I know we love to. But one of the things I would <laughs> the love con- to bring up the controversial game. The yeah. only people that are saying that are the Kansas City fans that are bitching that they didn't get bailed out again. Yeah. And big dick like, media. It's, it's big dick con- media yeah. too. Seriously, um, come on. So we'll start this off though, real quick. With coming into last night, Mr. Lafleur was fifteen and zero in the month of December. Yeah, winning last night puts him at sixteen and zero in the month of December. Let's be straight. Kansas City did not do enough to win that game, and everything we talked about on this podcast came into fruition with them. They cannot throw the deep ball very well. Now no, you want to talk the, about that? I think that. they're the worst in the league. Yes, throwing the deep yeah. ball and fourth quarter offense is terrible, terrible. And now here's the kicker, right? You want to talk about that pass interference? Well, not you specifically, but they want to talk about this pass interference call. The only reason that play was even in a position to be made was because of the bullshit roughing the passer call on the play prior. Had that well, not that- even been in that fucking realm you had an extra 15 yards you went from 10 to 25 yards closer which puts well, you the in clock position the clock should have ran out on the mvs call because they called him out of bounds and he was being pulled out He's, he was being pulled back the, inbounds the out of his, bounds his... the clock there were so many bad calls in that last one minute how dare you how dare you pick one fucking play and say that that's the reason they fucking missed because if my memory serves me correctly Kansas City already attempted a two-point conversion and failed miserably, and their best running back just went Mike Tyson on a dude and got kicked the fuck out a couple with minutes, minutes prior. With two minutes to go, yeah. That so, was the, that was Pacheco. I don't understand if he. I know he's probably not going to listen to this podcast, but seriously, man, you got to do better than that. Your t- your team is relying on you. You're one of the best players on the field. You got fantasy keep managers keep relying ahead. on you. In this realm of reality, you could have had one more touchdown, bumped that bitch up to almost 30 points. What the fuck were you thinking? Yeah, he ain't going to listen to me, though. <laughs> he, <ain't thinking. laughs> he, he, he clearly wasn't thinking. He was he swinging. He was not thinking about fantasy football and managers, he was, bro. He was only doing that because the guy 
was it uh, Owens was blocking him, like pushing him back to the ground. Yeah, dude, the guy's trying to score a touchdown. He doesn't want you to get up. He knows you're probably the fastest player out there. That's going to run him down. Do we know of an engine that runs hotter than Owens? Bro, in the last two minutes of that game on that defense, Owens single-handedly sealed the deal more or less. Thanks to he's I been mean, money. Mixed... The last two weeks, Man. he's been pretty friggin' good. Let's yeah, just I say mean, that. Okay, so it starts with that bogus personal foul call. But for him to come up big on the I bogus mean, pass interference call too, the one that the, the phantom PI that they called. <laughs> yeah. That he was like, okay, man. All right. Yeah. yeah. To... It was, you could not ask for any more help than you got. And then at the end, you continued to ask for more help. Right. As a did fan you, base. Did you see Collinsworth call out? Travis Kelsey, he goes, when he got called for PI for pushing off, yeah. he goes, he does that a lot. Yeah, he just he, got he, caught today. I'm like, if he does it a lot, isn't that pass interference every fucking yeah. time? Travis Kelsey does it a lot. The difference is, and you know this, but the difference is this little elbow action. The yeah, when you it, extend your arm, it yeah, locks. it makes it yeah. obvious, yes. And, and a yeah, lot of players... He's let's not be honest, though. a lot of players do that. Not Jefferson just him. does it. Yeah. Jefferson does it a lot. Jamar Chase does it a fuckload, bro. You, yeah. you watch Jamar Chase the next time, dude. Every other Is he catch. Be playing the night? Yeah. Yeah, he'll be playing tonight. Every other catch that dude has, he's got hands. And he's got this little. I don't know if his sleeve doesn't allow his it arm to block. extend all yeah. the way. He's got it. He's got it he's well. Fucking just, he's out there shoving her around. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Why do you think he's always fucking open? Right? I'm always fucking yeah. open. Yeah. That's, that's just. So another crazy cool thing about this game, right? 756 days since Jordan Love's first start against the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, it was, it was a weird stat. Smoked him, bro. Chiefs smoked him. So apparently, yeah. Mr. Love has had this game circled for a long time. Long, long time. And our boy Love went out there and wrote his own story, bro. He outdueled Patrick Mahomes. He outdueled him. Our boy can play in the big games. Just imagine they're gonna the Packers aren't exactly extremely healthy let's say that no team is around this time everybody's <laughs> you know. we're very not healthy yeah yeah, yeah. but i'm and saying football, but, but yeah. i'm saying got just like think 12 dudes on that list this team has got the opportunity with an extra draft pick in the second round this year to put either more weapons around them or to get better on the offensive line and you know, and protect them you hear a lot of people complain about green bay not taking offensive weapons in the first round but who the f drafts offensive weapons better than Green Bay in the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds? Y'all realize that uh, you everybody talks about Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones. Aaron, that dude was a sixth rounder or fifth rounder, fifth or sixth rounder. Bro, Devontae Adams, I think, was a, a second or third rounder. <laughs> It's, I don't it's understand what you're saying. Wow. Look, look, look at fucking Christian Watson. Look at Romeo Dobbs. Look at Hicks. Or, I'm sorry, Wicks. Look at... Fuck. They're all over. Jane Reed. Yeah, well, they're okay. They're not elite. I mean, it's, yeah. You Bro, do those get catches those. Christian was making last... You do get those. You got to... Usually first-round pick. He's hamstring again. It's his hamstring. Yeah. They Lafleur. Did you listen to Lafleur's press conference today? He talked about it. He said that his it's his hamstring again, and they won't know anymore until tomorrow. So doctors but provide thirty six minutes thirty six minutes ago. MSN doctors provide concerning injury update on Packers Christian Watson. Let's see. However, okay, within the Packers. Wow, this is going to take a second. Go ahead, keep talking. I'm going to talk quietly. This is, it was his hamstring, whatever it is, what it is. It's been nagging him the entire season. He missed three games with it. So, yeah, uh, it's the it's, fifth right hamstring strain. That's not good. So, he could potentially be out for three, four weeks. 
because that's not yeah. it's not something that you want to just rush back on because you're gonna you're gonna stretch it well, again and it's gonna freaking happen again. And I tell you what, that I'm starting to notice more about this staff is that we generally care about our players' health. And we, even though they're able to come back, they we don't see them back in full capacity for a week or two after the norm. You want to address something that I didn't, I, I noticed watching the game. What the fuck kind of preparation did Kansas City do on the field? Those dudes were slipping and sliding all over the place and getting hurt. Like, Lambo, what the fuck yeah. Are they doing? Lambeau Field has been doing that to put. I don't under. I don't understand. No, but I don't understand why it's this teams... really weird thing. Okay, so check, it's this really weird thing, and I believe there's a conspiracy theory here. And I'm glad you brought this up. I'll jump right into it. Okay, you so can't. check. check the thing so is, the by now they have to know what cleats the Packers are wearing that they can wear the same fucking exactly. Ones. So, my only thought with this, bro, is all this smoke came out about the artificial turf. And owners started to get really scared that they were going to have to dish out a buttload of money to get rid of all this artificial turf. And now magically, you're seeing more natural grass injuries. And there's been an emphasis in the media to point out while playing on natural gas grass. Well, that's just because the players are complaining about it. I'm t- I'm t- as I said, it's a conspiracy theory, bro. But I don't pass nothing past these greedy fucking owners, bro. Not a goddamn thing. I think they're yeah, putting the- a little extra rubber pellies down on that bitch. A little extra rubber pellies down on that bitch. On cancer causing pebblets. It's players just, just shredded fucking. tires. Yeah. Shredded tires. Yeah. You and That's you, what you, you and Jeff- was. Bro, I'm, yeah, it's I'm just telling fucking you. terrible. I was it's watching a, terrible. I can't remember where I was, YouTube or somewhere, a few moons back, but I was watching like this general health concern about these rubber pellets and that like players ingest basically a fucking street tire in their career. Like you eat an, a whole fucking tire in your career, bro. <laughs> but why would you want to play on turf then? That's fucking ridiculous. That That's seems just, like- yeah. Past nine. And it's getting real bad at times, bro. Like the camera, and it's just bro's got fucking pepper down his arm and in his face. Yeah. He's like, pepper coming out of his face. Well, mouth. obviously, certain like, stadiums are damn. worse than others, too. Like, I think that Indianapolis is one that's crappy like that as well. Yeah. So I don't, hey, listen, I'm just, the fuck writing's on the wall, man. I'm just conspiracy, maybe not. Yeah. Really I'm happy trash. that Michigan gets the play. Is Michigan playing on grass? They're in the Rose Bowl, correct? Yeah, they're in the Rose Bowl. Yep. All right, yeah, they're yeah, on yeah. grass. Yep. That bodes well for Michigan. That bodes Michigan well plays for better Michigan. on grass than they do. The, the position of the game or where the game is played bodes well for Michigan. Oh, um, yes. California is a hotbed for Michigan fans. Yeah. They love going yeah, out there. Absolutely. I, said, I told Will this. I, said, really hates. I told Will on, uh, he, I, he's being a dick on Facebook. He, uh, he's Oh, Alabama by 14. I said, dude, Alabama's going to be lucky if their fans show up. I said, Alabama yeah, yeah, yeah. does not travel as well as Michigan does. And they're going to, and the, their arrogant, cocky assholes probably expect to win. So good luck. That's I told you. The SEC is trying to push that, that random narrative that, oh, Michigan's afraid. I'm like, motherfucker, those are humans. You want to know, you don't want to know what that tells me that the SEC knew they were going to be there. The only team that the only teams that shouldn't have known they were going to be there was the ACC and the SEC. Yet for some reason, the SEC just knew they were going to be there. And yeah, I, they knew I, they were getting a team in, no matter what. So it, 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 it felt that way. It felt that way. And but here's the argument: Oh, the SEC is the greatest conference in the football. The SEC's won 14 of the last 17. Shut the fuck up. We are not talking about the past. In this scenario, well done. Congratulations. That's awesome. But right now, it's about the present. It's about what has been presently shown, okay? And you should not have, well, whatever. Who cares? They're a bunch of old, crazy fucks anyways. Here's but you thing. should not have taken the past into consideration because, again, you walk into that, where do we go, when do we stop, and what do we pick? Because the past got- should have told you a third-string quarterback can do great things. We have four weeks until Michigan plays – Alabama. And 
Just, here's the thing. Is Milrow going to improve enough in those four weeks? Because I know that Jay McCarthy and Michigan probably are going to get healthier yeah. and they're going to improve. But is you Alabama know, going to be able to fix their fucking problems? You can, That dude is a turnover machine sometimes. And you can't do that against Michigan. Michigan was not going to beat themselves. It's really funny, so, too. You look at all these elite quarterbacks that Michigan has played, right? Or three or four of them. Okay, you look at their stats before they played Michigan. One, maybe two interceptions. You look at their stats after they played Michigan, and it's double to triple what it was prior to moving in. That's not anything other than pure dominance. Our defense is fire. They give up almost four sacks a game. Alabama does. They do also sack about three times a game. But Michigan's going to be able to get pressure on Alabama. They, Michigan needs what Michigan needs to Michigan. do is not let JJ sit in the fucking pocket though. Yeah. He, they need to move him out. He needs to be rolled yeah. out and roll around. He can get away from the defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that is the only concern I have is that Alabama's defensive line is going to be able to get pressure. They are good enough. They will well, get pressure. Well, our biggest concern, our biggest, I thought what our biggest concern on that offensive line was going to be was was the center, and arguably, it's just been the outsides and misread opportunities i sent you that message i think jj needs i think i wish i hope jj stays one more season not for any other reason other than trevor lawrence's record could be broken and oh boy needs a little extra time reading that he he isn't going to though because he's already being contacted by like the the giants want him the vikings want him he's going to be a first round draft pick so why not come back why you're not why not go pro He's not oh, next year. This he's not day and age, you're taking a all. pay cut. You're taking a pay cut to go pro. That Michigan <laughs> has potentially, if he signs with Michigan, the number one quarterback recruit in the country in Bryce Underwood. So yeah. why would you? Why not? No, Plus I know. Quarterback I'm not, I'm not, in, not in a Michigan fan base pure sense. In just for the reasons be the text message that I send you, I think he, he it would do wonders for him. He would be a top draft pick next year. He'd be a top two, top three quarterback next year. And his decision making and his ability to un- read the defenses is continuously getting better as the years go on. I think one more year in college ball would make this dude not only a Heisman, but a, a top two draft pick for sure. Maybe even number one. I don't think so. Because Jaden Daniels is still a sophomore. Yeah. You're not being no Jaden Daniels for the number one. Alabama's got three five star quarterbacks. That is crazy to me. How do you have three? I mean, I'm just saying this because it's an, that's an asshole thing to think about. They've got three. All three of them are five stars. Yeah. Well, they don't play and, you like fuck, and you have this problem where you benched them? Like you said, yeah. something's going on in Alabama. It's and They still think that their shit doesn't stink, and I think that's what bothers us the most. It's, it's just a history thing. That's exactly what it is. Oh, look what I've done in the past. That's fine, man. We're in the present right now. And presently, the squad that I'm watching Michigan play – this, there's a hell of a lot more dangerous than what I'm seeing Alabama could do. You're talking, you're, you're looking at Georgia as this fucking juggernaut. According to the committee, they were shitty enough and their strength of record this season was shitty enough to make them go from one to six. So that's Georgia. In my opinion, no juggernaut there. You don't do that to a juggernaut team. They didn't want to three-peat either, though. They didn't want him in there. That They were hoping for Alabama to upset him so they'd have a reason not to put him in. And I think that's you know, really what it comes down to. And I think most of the smoke is gone. You're, you're, there's a few burned people that are still screaming in the background. I think another shit-ass ESPN radio host was talking about how if you were going to pull a team out of there, you should have pulled the cheater Michigan out of there. And it's, Jesus fucking Christ, yank that dick a little harder, bro. That dick is still attached to whatever's trying to fuck something. And you they, they're just squeezing it for the last little I'm bit. I'm not entirely sure, anymore. Charles, they even understand what the fuck is going on anymore. They they keep bringing this and beating a dead horse with this whole fucking, fucking cheating thing. Two, two weeks in a row, man. You got one dude over there going, yeah, Ohio's going to break two runs. Or Iowa's going to break off two really great runs. What the? You don't obviously watch any college football. It was a little Ready. concerning that Michigan couldn't really move the ball on Iowa very well, though. Looking at this, listen, I'm looking at this. To, I'm, 
did we make the same plays against Iowa that we were doing against Ohio State? Do you feel that way? No. I don't either. And my and the reason I bring this up is that Harbaugh is a chess master. And if you're going to give game tape, I don't want you to have the tape for things that I'm going to do to you because I have to, and I don't have to against these teams. You want me to go score 40 points. That's fine. I could throw 40 points on there, but I'm going to be showing you way too much when I do that. But nowadays with AI and all this stuff, anything they've ever done in the last 15 years is on video. So I guess that really doesn't matter. You could, you, I can see that argument. I'm still going with the chess. Okay. Because this has been the story for Michigan week after week you look at what happens the week prior and when we try to to put that onto the next week and and i'm starting to realize that this fucking team after goddamn saturday it's a new week and there's a, an entirely new game plan and they go out and they execute that game plan that's needed for that scenario and I just I feel like that's how Michigan has played this season. I feel like they're more of an execute team it's than gonna a flash be a different, team. Uh, it's gonna be a different game than it was last year. They had to outscore TCU, and it just that wasn't Michigan's game. Never was the entire season. Right. Uh, and they were playing with it. There was a track meet. That's yeah. all TCU wanted is a track meet. And, and Michigan, got, yeah, Michigan got themselves into that. They yeah. fuck, the last two years outside of that 2021 Georgia team. It's or 2020 Georgia team, whichever it was, but the the last two years it's been Michigan fucking mistakes that have taken them down. It has not been the other team outperforming, arguably. Right, fuck, who would have thought? Goddamn TCU put up 51 on that defense. 51. All right, well, you know? all right. <laughs> enough about them, I guess. Let's break down the other <laughs> matchup just for a second here. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I, I like what I saw from Washington. I liked it a lot, but it's it, Texas has better receivers and a better running back. It's just, I see this game being close, but yeah. Texas is going to be able to control the line of scrimmage with their off. The Texas's offensive line is one of the best in college football. I think this it's, game comes down to the turnover battle. I yeah. think whoever I sits think, on the plus side of the turnover wins the game. And I think yours is probably not he's gonna he's more liable to make a mistake yeah. Penix is a lefty Wait, have you ever seen the ball come out of this bro's hands like it is a weird it's a weird angle he yeah. like throws from the top of the ball like he's throwing like this it's hard for me to watch left-handed quarterbacks it is it's it, very it just, hard i don't know it's something in my mind it just doesn't let me look at it like it's right i think it's hard for a defender that's why he has so few interceptions too it's hard for them to track that ball. I, he's been throwing. He's been throwing. He's been throwing the ball to the other team the last three, four weeks. Though he he did well throughout the season. He's been the interceptions of Washington State is what got him in trouble. Yeah. Really, the the turnovers in the Oregon game is what what made that Oregon game so close because they were they were running away with that game. But yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree. It's with the you. best team. It's the best team that either one of these teams have played all season. Um, yeah, I think Washington is better than Alabama, to be honest with you. I really do. I think Washington is more efficient on offense than Alabama. I think Alabama has the better defense, but. Yeah, it's hard. You are you have to sit there and look at the schedules and look at the games. And but then you, you look at that fucking Auburn game, the Iron Bowl, and you're like, this fucking team's in the playoffs. Seriously, this team's in the fucking playoffs. And Alabama what, or FSU? They're a, doink, they're a doink away from not being in the fucking playoffs because yeah. guess who was uh, – Georgia was outplaying them at the end of that game. Oh, yeah. No, were, you know, if you had four minutes to that game, they're losing. FSU would have been an easier win. But FSU or Alabama bode well for Michigan. And if Alabama does come to the plate – better than what they have this season and walks away with the win. I think regardless, the winner of this semifinal goes on to win the championship. Yeah, I, think, I, think I think these like, are the two best teams. That. Yeah. I think I think a lot of people agree with that. Yeah, just... I mean, I'm not blind to the fact that Alabama is still a really good football team and they have a really good coach, Nick Saban, and they deserve respect. Old boy yeah, can think... throw the ball and they do have a few weapons, but 
That's it's revenge game. That it's a revenge game for Michigan. They want that payback for what happened a few years ago. But was it seven, eight years ago, nine years ago? I can't yeah. remember what it was. And 10, they, it's just the Big Ten's ready to punch the SEC in the mouth. I think this is. You look at the team. They've set this, this Michigan. Up. This Michigan team. When that Michigan team went up against Georgia, the entire Michigan team looked small. Yeah. They, they, I have not seen a team that makes Michigan look small this year. Even Georgia. I was excited for that Georgia game. I really was. I think that's the most. That's, I think that's the most upsetting thing about all of this is that we're not going to see Michigan versus Georgia. And that's, that's right. what I really wanted. As a fan to... of great football, that's what I really wanted. Do you want to break down the uh, the Big Ten bowl games? Yeah, let's rip those up. While you're pulling those up, I would like to point out that the Jets have scored four touchdowns in 88 drives. Leonard, just official, Leonard joined the Eagles instead of the Cowboys. The oh, linebacker that's from so the Colts. awesome. I can't I wait bet to you see Mike Skip is Bayless. going ape shit. Yeah. I can't wait to see Skip Bayless cry about this bullshit. I cannot wait. Oh, man. Right. And I, I'm so excited for Kent, for Martin there, too. Oh, I can't wait to watch Undisputed tomorrow. That's All right. Awesome. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. We've got Utah versus Northwestern. Really? Yeah, the Las Vegas Bowl. What's the what's the, do we have the, the line? on that? Do we have the line? Minus on that seven. One? Utah's eight and four. Yeah. Utah's favor? Yeah. Okay. But check this one out. This is one that how did Minnesota backdoor their way in with five wins? I thought you had to be, have six wins to be bowl eligible. And there was they weren't the only power five team. They beat Iowa. I what think that's that probably it. That's, that's probably what got them a bowl game was beating Iowa in Iowa. I thought you still had to have six wins to be to qualify. They got a winning record? N- nope. Five oh. and seven. It's weird and, to me. And, and that just tells me that the rest of the teams on the piece of paper were, were trash. <laughs> that's well, what mean, they had to pick from. Obviously, if we're getting that, the teams they had to pick from were, were worse than that. Here's Although, an interesting one. Did JMU get in? Did they, they probably didn't no, get a ball? I don't think they did. I think they. So they that's probably why, play. bro. <laughs> yeah. But you would have to. I would have put them against Liberty and let them fight it out. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh, Rutgers versus Miami. Very interesting matchup here. Miami's got a very crazy recruiting class coming in next year. That thirty for thirty did well. Yeah, yeah, it brought some uh, it brought some shit to light for sure. And here's a here's the one that we all that we want to watch. This is on December 29th, Friday. It's a Friday night game. You yeah. Got Missouri and Ohio State. That'll now be Missouri good. wanted the smoke, they got it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I honestly I think Ohio State should roll over. It depends on who plays though. From the sound of it, I don't think I don't th- I don't think Ohio well, McCord State. Can't, if you entered the transfer portal, he can't play. No, McCord's not there, so they're going somewhere yeah. else. Neither is Fleming, so they're is, without two offensive weapons. Yeah. Is Harrison going to play? That'll uh, be interesting. That'll be interesting because if he doesn't line, play, if he Charles, the line play, is telling me that he ain't playing because the line is two. As I said, if if Harrison is not playing, that's fourteen and a half points gone. I'm just saying the line. That line screams to me that Harrison's not playing. It's Ohio State minus two. Missouri might smoke Ohio State, bro. I'm just it's throwing possible. that out there. Because uh, I, I think Missouri's coming to play. Turn another old, another <laughs> one. Ole Miss and Penn State. Another SEC Michigan. I actually like this matchup. This is a good matchup. Yeah, that should you be got fun. The, I believe Dick Franklin's going to drop the ball again, but Penn State Come on, should Dick roll Franklin. That one. Uh, actually, Penn State and should roll uh, that another one. SEC one. We got Auburn and Maryland. That, and it's going to be awesome to see Maryland this go beat the all, fuck out of Auburn. It's going to be all so SEC. cool to see Maryland beat the fuck out of it, Auburn. It, Char- Charles, it continues. We got Wisconsin and LSU. <laughs> and guess what? We got another one. Iowa and Tennessee. We're playing the entire SEC that made the playoffs. Yeah. Every one of them. And then you got Michigan, Alabama. And granted, all three of those games are on Monday. Mm-hmm. January 1st. 
Wisconsin plays. We're going we're gonna to watch Big Ten football. Wisconsin, LSU, Iowa, Tennessee, Alabama, and Michigan for the nightcap. Now that's going to be fantastic. How, I don't know. Their scheduling how do you has been. put Iowa anywhere? That offense is terrible. The line is seven and a half for Tennessee. And guess who we get to see? Good to see Joe Milton again. God damn. I actually think that's a decent matchup for Iowa, though. Defensively, they can take the ball away from Milton and oh, it's Tennessee. gonna be it's gonna be hell for LSU. Yeah, but I, I don't know about Wisconsin. I think that's a bad matchup for them. I I don't think they can even come close to scoring as much as LSU is going to put on the board. Wisconsin was struggling just to get there. I, yeah, I that's for sure. They got seven just... wins. They backdoored their way in on one of them. Hell, that Iowa Wisconsin game was a dog fight. Wasn't it like six to three for a really long time Yeah, or nine to three. I'm thinking one of, one of, one of our next wrap up episodes, we'll jump in. We'll do the pac 12 bowls. See what, see where the pac 12 went because According to this SOR that I was looking into, yeah, the ACC and the Pac-12 all had SORs greater than the SEC. So I'm just I'm failing to see this smoke that is the SEC. Oh, we've got five teams and tied the top fifteen. Yeah, I'm just not seeing the smoke, bro. You know what? They'll try to justify it at the end of the year if their teams have a better bowl record. That's what they always do. That's what this is all about. This is about, hey, guess what? The Big Ten thinks they're better than the SEC. All right. You guys got what you, you guys, everything you asked for, you have with the bowl games. Let's see it. We'll have to see what they're putting down. Yeah. It'll be interesting to say the least. Oh, for sure. I don't have a what grinds my gears in the opposite direction for this week. There's been a lot going on with the football and everything. I tell you what, we could just, I'll tell you what grinds my gears. I'll tell you what rotates my gears in the opposite direction real quick. Are you ready for this? The goddamn college football playoff committee. The fact that we even have a a committee that there's no, there's just no, it's, I'm just going to beep. Charles, just fill it in. Let's fuck it. What I picture is a bunch of old men sitting around a fucking big old fucking table with eyes wide shut party. Ah, ah, yeah. ah. That's, I mean, and, and, that's all I can fucking imagine when I see this shit. And it fucking burns my fucking bird. I don't hear, know. It's to fucking hear terrible. Oregon's athletic director talk the way he did about FSU. And I'm sitting here looking at you going, bro, you, your team had a 73% chance to win. You should have no right in to say anything. There is so there is no way that it's so biased it is there is just absolutely no way and you're not going to get the smoke you deserve because next year it more or less fixes itself we do have to remember there there was always going to be a problem you had four spots for five power conference teams you had four spots i know i know no matter there was not there was not a great situational but, answer for any of this. And I agree with that. I, right. I wholeheartedly agree there, with that. 100%. Right. Because of them though, right? Because well, right. of they've, them, they've, because they've, if they've you made had, this, it they should have had eight. Went, it always should have been eight. Yeah. And if you went to a system that ranked them accordingly, not the AP poll, but this by that you have, you've got the SOR, you've got all this shit that you could use. You chose not to. Someone should do away with the bye. top 25 period. And don't do a top 25 until the last week of the season. Yeah, it's so my Because well, that's just it because they use it for stupid thing. shit. This yeah. whole college fucking playoff thing just rotates my gears in the opposite direction. Fuck them. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Yeah. Either way, though, FSU would have got rolled. Let's just be real. That's true. <laughs> that's just not a- that's just not sugar coat. They were they, not a they, good football team. If, if FSU against Michigan, they're a 13 and a half point underdog. FSU, or they're a 13 point underdog. FSU against Georgia, they were like a 14 and a half point underdog. It, Michigan against Georgia is a one and a half underdog. Michigan against Alabama is a one and a half yeah. um, favorite. So, you know, eat that for what you want. 
Go blue, team 144. Yeah, I agree. It's time. And uh, we have Brandon Ruault coming on the show on Wednesday. I'm that so should be excited a good one. That. That'll be a really and good it is, one. Uh, potentially, we might be having the uh, the 12th man on Wednesday as well, depending on what time I get home from work. So, awesome. 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 That's for, we're going to get him before Mr. the Miami, ESPN, right? 30 for 30, Mr. Miami. Yes. Yeah. I'm really excited for that. We got We really I'm, have I'm, to talk to him about the, uh, the Miami Rutgers matchup. See what he has to do with Shiano. Yeah. I, yeah. I would hopefully, be, I would assume he's going to be down there at that game. Cause that game is in, oh, no, that's in the, that's in Yankee stadium. The pinstripe bowl. The pinstripe bowl. That'll be fun to watch. Yeah. I like that one. I like that one. But hell yeah. Go pack. Go Joe Flacco. Didn't look too bad against the Browns or against no, he the did Rams. And way to go jets who are about to start Trevor Simeon. So they went through the entire Aaron Rodgers list, fucked that off. And right. now they're going to go their own way. 88 drives four touchdowns. Nice. <laughs> I think that's about it, Broski. You got anything else? No, we actually get to play intro music now. So, nice. or outro music. What song? What song should we have on here? Hey, I don't. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Wow. Oh, hey, Taylor Swift was at that Packer game. Our sources came through. <laughs> Fuck it, Charles. Play it out, bro. Play it out. We love you all. Thank you so much for your likes, your clicks, your comments, your subscribes. Big Blue's going to roll that tide. Yeah, absolutely. I got a good one, Charles. Nice. I was going to say, because if, if we, we should see if we have the rights to... Uh, Fuck it. Teenage dirt, a teenage dirt bag or whatever it is. People dream high. In the quiet of a night, you know that I caught it. <laughs> God damn, Karma's that guy. All right, I love you guys. Debra. <laughs> Yeah. Jordan, 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 love. <laughs>